हेलो एवरीबॉडी दिस इज डॉक्टर विशाल त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो साइंस एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग आई गुवाहाटी नाउ इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी टॉक अबाउट द वेइंग बैलेंस सो वी हैव टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ वेइंग बैलेंस वी हैव द एनालिटिकल बैलेंस और वी हैव द डिजिटल बैलेंस द वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल रिमेन्स द सेम एज फॉर एज द वेदर इट इज द एनालिटिकल बैलेंस और द डिजिटल बैलेंस वॉट हैपन इज दैट इन द इन एनालिटिकल बैलेंस Uh, the balance is being uh, protected within a wooden uh, uh, chamber where you have on the both side you have the doors through which you can be able to open the door and keep uh, use these pans and then you have the two pans uh, one uh, which are going being connected with a rod and then these rods are being kept onto a middle pillar and with the axis here so uh you can imagine that if i have to measure the 10 mg of compound so what i'll do is i'll keep the 10 mg of weight on to this pan and, and then i will start putting the powder into this pan so what happen is when i put the 10 mg of pan that actually is going to exert the pressure on to this pan and because of that the central uh, rod is going to be tilted and then you are going to add the powder into this side and you will keep adding until this rod is again uh, going to be the straight so in the beginning the rod is going to be like this and when you add the rod will come down and it will going to uh, you know uh, equalize and by doing so you can be able to measure or you can be able to weigh the amount of that particular compound you might have seen these kind of analytical instruments in some of the jewelry shops and other places uh, which are now evenly been uh, uh, replaced by some of these analytical instruments and whereas in the case of the analytical instruments uh, uh, or whereas in this case of uh, in the case of digital instruments what you have is you have a digital display you have a, a button for tearing so that it actually makes a zero and then you have the balance pane and then on this pane you can actually keep your object and then you can measure you have the two doors on both the sides that can be open and close and this whole chamber is been enclosed in a glass chamber so let's see how the digital uh, balance works so the weighing panels so in this case the mechanism is little different that the weighing pan the the place where you are going to keep your substance to measure it is actually attached to a electromagnetic coil so it is actually attached to a coil and through which the electric current is flowing the coil floated in a magnetic field created by the amplifier the amplifier maintains the right currents to keep the level balanced with the mass on the pan as more weight is applied to the pan the current is increased to maintain the levels of the positions the counter correcting force that is created is measured and translated into the various electronic obtained electronics obtained to readable result the readable result current is then translated into a display number that is shown into the user so what happen is this pan is been connected to the a uh, a uh, coil and that coil is be, is been supplied with the electric current and because of that the coil will remain into the central positions and when you are actually applying a pan or you are uh, keeping anything that is actually displacing the position of that particular coil so the position of the coil is being changed you actually apply the current so that the magnetic field around that coil is going to be increased and because of that the coil will again come back to its uh, central positions so the amount of current what you have applied is actually been resulted into a particular type of force so if you are actually applying the electromotive force to bring this coil to a uh, central positions that can be converted into the amount of the weight what you have put because the weight what you have put is actually pressing the coil into the horizontal side and then you are applying a particular electromotive force to bring the coil into the normal position so this actually can be calibrated and then it actually can be displayed in the form of the milligrams or grams like that so that is a working principle of the digital display uh, uh, weighing balance and let's uh, see how you are going to use that and whether what are the precautions you should take when you are actually using a weighing balance 
in the good lab practices uh, we are now going to show you the uh, how to uh, the demonstration of the weighing scale and so there are different types of weighing scales which are uh, which are available in different labs for example in the chemistry lab you have the weighing scales because of a larger capacity where you have the pan weighing scales where you have the uh, uh, you know two pans and uh, you can use the weight on one side and uh, you can use the uh, powder on the other side and that's how you can be able to uh, the weigh the uh, so solid amount and uh, in the in the other places uh, you also have the different types of weighing scale because depending on the type of work what they are doing so in most of the biotechnology or the molecular biology labs you will have the two different types of uh, weighing balance one is called as the core core balance or the uh, uh, the larger scale balance which actually goes from the milligrams to gram weight and then you have the uh, fine balance which actually goes from the sub milligram weight which which means you can actually be able to measure the milligram uh, the way from you can be able to weigh the uh, the substances from the 0.1 milligrams to uh, uh, 100 milligram range so this is the uh, this is the instrument which you uh, again use for the uh, the fine balance which actually goes from the 0.1 milligrams or uh, 0.01 milligrams to uh, uh, 100 milligrams whereas this is the chorus or uh, the bigger uh, balance which uh, you can go from the uh, 1 milligrams to 100 milli uh, in uh, 1 milligrams to the 220 grams the both of the balance the uh, weighing scheme or the weighing uh, variety is almost the same in both of these things what you have is you have a pan on which which is actually being kept onto a spring and depending on the weight what you are going to put so once you put the weight onto this pan this pan get uh, get pressed inside and by pressing of this pan it actually causes a tension to the underlining uh, underlining springs and because of that it actually and that how much the spring is going to be compressed that's the way it is actually going to give you the weight because that is already being calibrated in the system so that's why when you start the machine uh, the, you have to uh, ensure the two parameters when uh, number one the weighing balance because it is depends on the how much the pan is going to go inside the so weighing balance has to be kept onto a plane surface the weighing balance has to be kept in a in a way so that it should not have any kind of uh, disbalance for example this side up or this side down so to to ensure that the weighing balance is on a plane surface the weighing scales are always been having a bubble in the machine and this bubble has to be present in the center so as you can see the bubble is uh, uh, there and that bubble is uh, present in the center of the rim so that should be the case so when you start the machine in the beginning what you have to do is you have to ensure that the bubble is in the center of the machine and then you can start weighing so you can see we have a glass cage on top of this machine so, and this glass cage is only to ensure that there will be no entry of air because air is also going to exert the pressure onto the pan and that's how it may actually give you the uh, wrong readings so suppose i would like to measure uh, the glucose and would like to prepare the 10 mg per ml glucose solutions so what i'll do is i'll first going to measure the append of where we are going to measure the uh, where we are going to weigh the glucose and then subsequently we are going to add the glucose so what you have to do is without disturbing the wing balance first you have to open one side of the glass door very carefully you have to put your append off and what you can see is that the weighing balance is giving me a reading of the the append off now i have to nullify this weight so that i will be able to know the weight of the 
logo so there is a tear button so tear button is just to make the weighing balance or the weight of the append of zero so what i'll do is i'll press the tear button and what you see is that the uh, it has now showing me a uh, weight in the gram now what i'll do is i'll remove this weighing balance uh, the append of i will open the tube uh, bottom so when you want to measure any solvent or any any when you want to weigh any powder and while you are opening the uh, the cap what you have to ensure that the rim of this cap or rim of this bottle is very clean should not have any uh, salt or anything deposited so you can actually clean this so that it should not get into your bottle and that's how it may should contain contaminate your uh, compound so what you can do is you can take the small amount of uh, tissue paper and what you can do is you can just clean your rim of this tube so that it the uh, whatever is compound is or dust is present on the rim should not get into your bottle now to take out the uh, the the uh, salt or the uh, substances we have the different amount different uh, types of spatulas so this is a big spatula if you want to measure in the gram range this is a middle spatula or middle range spatula if you want to do it in the uh, sub gram range and this is the thing which you want to measure if you want to measure if you want to weigh the very small amount so in this case we want to measure only the uh, 10 mg so what i'll do is i'll just take the small amount of spatula and pour it into the up and off okay and as soon as you are done just close the bottle first and then you are going to measure as i said very carefully you have to put your thing so that you should not press or you should not disturb the pan forcefully then what you do is you close the door and see the reading so this is the reading of the 83 mg what you have so uh, now what i'll do is i'll take out the small amount of uh, powder from here and because we have to make the uh, the thing at the 10 mg per ml so accordingly i'll take out and then pour it again and then again i'll measure and that you continue so this time this is now i have removed the small amount so it is going to now showing me the 80 mg so what i'll do is i'll just make the solution according to the 80 mg and then i will take up the things because it is always desirable as long as the salt the this salt is not very costly you should not take the salt from the append off and put it back into your main stock in case the salt is very costly even then you can just take out and put it into a separate vessel so that you can use the subsequent usage and once you are done with your weighing it is always important that you should clean your spatula first with the tissue paper and then with the help of the water so that there will be no uh, leftover uh, salt being deposited onto this also when you are actually measuring the corrosive uh, substances such as the sodium hydroxide or other kind of corrosive uh, powder you have to ensure that the it should not be remain onto the spatula that time you have to clean the spatula with the water followed by that you remove the water or the moisture using the tissue paper so uh, the same procedure you have to follow for even for the uh, fine uh, balance as well uh, apart from that uh, if you remember uh, uh, we in the previous lecture we have discussed about the different types of the biosafety levels we talk about that there are four biosafety levels biosafety level 1 biosafety 2 3 and 4 and all these biosafety levels are being classified based on the amount of risk Uh, it is been associated so the bio safety level 1 and 2 are associated with the very low or the moderate risk whereas the bio safety level number 3 and 4 are associated with the high risk so all these bio safety levels uh, microbes are being handled in a clean uh, benches or the benches which are been meant for uh, the handling these kind of microbes so we are going to discuss about the uh, laminar hoods what is being used to handle the low risk microbes like which are falling into the bio safety level 1 and 2 
So, this is a typical laminar air flow and in a typical laminar air flow what you have is you have a filter through which the air is coming into towards you and then it is having a glass panel which is actually being protected uh, from the UV and then you have a place for turning this whole chamber into the UV so that you can be able to sterilize this chamber and then you also have the other kinds of uh, things you have uh, uh, the lamp so that you can actually do the heat sterilizations. So, let us see how you can be able to use a laminar flow and what are the precautions you should take while you are uh, using the laminar flow and uh, what are the different types of cleaning procedures you have to follow while you are using the laminar. So, in this video I am going to show you the uh, equipment laminar airflow chamber. So, while using the laminar airflow chamber what and all the precautions we have to take and how to use it. So, basically this equipment is used for the uh, for maintaining the aseptic condition. If we are working on some biological samples, some plant tissues, some animal tissues. So, we need to make the aseptic conditions. So, if we have if we want to uh, remove all the contaminants. So, for that purpose we have to use this laminar airflow chambers. So, th basically this equipment is uh, uh, containing four switches here. So, one is the means for making it on and off. Another is to maintaining the flow that is low and high. The third one is for UV light and fourth one is the simple tube light, plain white fluorescent tube light. So, this equipment is uh, basically uh, works for uh, on the principle uh, it has uh, first uh, of all it has the uh, filter bag then uh, blower and then uh, HEPA filter it contains the filter bag just to filter the air all the uh, dust particles from the air and then uh, it has the blower to pass the air and uh, another filter that is HEPA filter HEPA stands for the high efficiency particulate air filter that is HEPA filter. So, HEPA filter is basically uh, it can filter out all the microorganisms including bacteria, fungus and all. So, let us understand how to use this. So, first of all uh, uh, while using this we have to make it on by this switch mains and we have to lift the lid. Wiping it with the tissue paper, uh, we need to sterilize all the uh, faucets and blades you are going to use for the for your work by using the 70% ethanol. Of the laminar and the faucets and plates, 
if you close the uh, ethanol and the flame also. And after closing this, we have to uh, make this UV light on. Now, when the UV light is on, stay away from the laminar because UV uh, light can be uh, dangerous to the operator also. And UV light uh, has to be switched on for 15 to 20 minutes for sterilizing all the areas. And uh, we can also keep, if we want to some, some media and something to get sterilized by the UV light, we can also keep that inside. Uh, as you can see the flow of the air from the inside to outside that the filtered air from the inside is coming to outside because we have to maintain the aseptic condition inside so the air uh, inside is completely sterile without any contamination or without any dust particle now after making it on up to 20 to 30 minutes now we can use it for any type of our biological work like transferring of the any uh, plant or animal tissue so this is our media in which we are going to transfer our uh, sample so let's make the Again. Sometimes uh, we can use it like half closed or fully open also. It's up to your convenience. We have to make sure we have to sterilize our hand properly with the 70% ethanol. And after sterilizing, we have to keep our hand inside the laminar area. We, we should not take them out while using. Now this is our media in which we are going to transfer our sample. Now uh, let me tell you how to handle the media, how to sterilize, heat sterilize this, this uh, opening of this. So we have to take out the cotton plug in this fashion. Now after taking out, we need to heat, heat sterilize the opening area. After this heat sterilize, by using any faucet, we can transfer our sample inside the media. And then after transferring, we have to again heat sterilize the opening and then we can close it by using the cotton plug. After finished your working, we need to uh, clean it again, the flow. First we need to switch it off the flame. Thank you. I hope you understand how to operate this and what and all the precautions we have taken and what are the principle on which it works. Uh, and let's move on to the next system. The next system is the water distillation units. So the water distillation units are being used mostly in the chemistry lab as well as some of the biology lab. We are, and these are being normally being used to do the distillation of the water so that the water what you are getting from the tap is being get distilled twice or uh, you know single distillation units and that is how you are actually going to remove the particulate impurities from that particular uh, water. So in a typical water distillation unit like for example this is a double distilled water distillation unit uh, you can have the 
integrated system where you can have the both the chambers uh, together or you can have the different system where you can have the two chambers uh, uh, separated and connected to a condenser. So, in a whether this is an integrated system or a separate system what happen is that when you turn on the coil into the first chamber, the first chamber the liquid goes into the it starts boiling okay and then it goes into the condenser. So, from condenser it the water get condensed and then it goes into the second chamber. So, this is the chamber number 1 and this is the chamber number 2 and that is how it, the, the, the condensed water is comes into this chamber and then this in this chamber it again being boiled with the help of the another heater and that is how it goes into the condenser and then from condenser it get condensed and then you can be able to collect this particular liquid into a vessel. So, this is called as the double distillation units. What is the advantage of double distillation unit is that the water is being more purified compared to the single distillation unit. Similarly, the same thing can be done in an integrated unit where you have the two chambers. This is the lower chamber which is being used uh, which is almost equivalent to the ch chamber number 1 and this is the top chamber which is equivalent to the chamber number 2 and both the cheese chambers are connected to the single distillation operators. And uh, we are going to take you to my lab and I will show you how to use these distillation units and what are the precautions you should take. Today we are going to give you a small demo about how to utilize or how to use the water distillation unit. So, in a double distillation water uh, distillation unit, you have the two chambers. What you have is a small chamber which is a lower chamber and a top chamber. The, uh, when you when you turn on the water, uh, the water comes into the first chamber and then when the when you turn on the uh, the heater, it is actually going to boil from here. It is going to be distilled by this condenser and then the water will not come out outside but instead the water is going to fall into the second chamber and once the second chamber will be uh, almost uh, more than 60 percent full then you can actually be able to turn on the second chamber and then from second chamber when the vapor will evaporate they will be get cooled by the condenser and then the water will come out from this particular nozzle. So, let us see how to operate this uh, water distillation unit. So, before you uh, you uh, start the water distillation unit, you have to ensure that you have the adequate water, uh, water into the lower chamber and as well as the water is well connected to the, uh, to the uh, condenser because if that, that does not happen, then the water will start boiling from the lower chamber and then will start heating the whole unit and ultimately it may actually cause the damage to the unit. So, uh, first what you have to do is you first have to open the tap so that it, it will start filling the water into the lower chamber. If you see the, uh, the tubing, it is actually being connected to the condenser. So, the same water source is actually circulating the water into the chamber as well as the same tubing is also giving the water to the lower chamber and then the excess water is actually being coming out from the this uh, uh, waste tubing. Uh, there is a there is a sensor also being kept here, which actually uh, uh, monitors to the monitors the level of the uh, level of the water. So if the level goes down below to this level, suppose some someday you uh, the water is not flowing and you turn on the machine, then once the level will go down to this unit uh, into this sensor, the level will the machine will stop working. So let's start with this. So first, what you have to do is first you have to turn on the first. Uh, chamber, the, the heater in the first chamber. So, what you see is this is the controlling unit. So, first you have to press this button and that actually will going to give the power into the lower chamber and then what you see now is the, the heater is heating and then it is actually boiling the water into the lower chamber and then slowly you will see that this water will evaporate and condense from the condenser and then the water will fall into the upper chamber. And I will show you if there will be any disconnection or if you suppose stop the uh, supply of the water then it is actually going to give you a alarm and it will stop the connection. For example, if I have, if I uh, remove the uh, sensor 
it is actually going to stop the machine. So that is the kind of a control uh, present in this particular machine so that there will be no damage because if the machine is running without the uh, uh, water in it then it actually can cause the severe damage and it may also affect uh, your because the, this is made up of a glass so if the glass is got broken it may actually cause the injury to the uh, to the student as well. So with this I would like to conclude my demo here. What you can see now is that the water is boiling into the lower chamber and then slowly you will see this water will go into the top chamber. So with this I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you.